One of the questions we answer most often is, which paint finish is best for my roof? Now there's really only two types of paint finishes, Kynar or S&P. So in this video, we've got Jeff with Continental Paintings to answer all of your questions. My name is Paul Rubio, Vice President of Western States Metal Roofing, and welcome to the Metal Roofing Learning Channel. This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, where you can find a variety of colors and finishes, all while saving by buying Factory Direct. You can view all the colors that Western States Metal Roofing has to offer by checking out the online color visualizer. This powerful tool will let you see what your home can look like with metal roofing or siding. Try it for free by visiting westernstatesmetalroofing.com or clicking the link above. Okay, today I have with us Jeff from Continental Coatings. Uh, Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Hi, good morning, guys. Uh, so I work with Continental Coatings. We're an industrial coating manufacturer, uh, specialized in coil coatings. We have a plant in Southern California, one in Texas, and uh, we're kind of expanding into the Midwest uh, currently as well. Uh, we're part of an international uh, industrial coating supplier and manufacturer, and uh, I've been in the coil coating business a long time. So a lot of our a lot of our customers they they want to know about the differences between Kynar and S and P. So so in layman's terms, can you kind of explain what a Kynar or PVDF coating is and what an S and P coating is, Jeff? Sure. Sure. So SMP stands for silicone modified polyester. And uh, so that, and that refers to the resin system. So that's the, basically the plastic portion of the paint that ends up on your metal uh, or ends up on your building product. And uh, so silicone modified polyester is a polyester resin that's been enhanced and strengthened with the silicone um, uh, monomer. So Kynar, uh, switching gears to Kynar, Kynar is a trade name for PVDF, which is uh, polyvalinidine fluoride. Uh, polyvalinidine fluoride is a uh, sister to uh, uh, Teflon and uh, other fluorocarbon products that uh, have been also branded and uh, trade named. Um, Kynar was originally developed by DuPont. And that chemistry um, is really different than the polyester chemistry. Uh, and it is more chemical resistant. Yeah, but the key thing in our, in the metal building uh, products arena, the key issue really is the durability. Uh, and by durability, I should say the UV uh, radiation resistance. So your chalk and fade resistance and your film integrity and the product just lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts because the sun is not beating on it. It's it's not, it's not absorbing that radiation. So with a polyester product or an acrylic product or other traditional uh, resin systems, um, it's absorbing the UV radiation and uh, it's breaking, it's oxidizing the polymer. So in the simplest of terms, a, an S&P paint is going to fade and possibly chalk at a much greater rate than a Kynar paint. Is, is that correct? Correct. So uh, the SMP product is pretty good, and that technology has improved dramatically over the last uh, few decades. Uh, but the chemistry is still not as good for chalk and fade as the fluorocarbon chemistry. So that's the main benefit. That's the main benefit of a Kynar is it's the the paint is going to stay vibrant longer, and you have to worry a lot less about it chalking. Can you briefly explain chalking and fading a little bit, also? Sure. So chalking, yeah, and fading. There's a couple aspects to it. But from a polymer standpoint, uh, when the, the UV radiation breaks down the polymer part of your formula, bad news. So that'll go, that goes powder, you know, that goes powdery, right? So, so you're going to have a bunch of powdery streaks on the paint, bunch of, looks like a bunch of like. The, the, uh, the gloss will diminish dramatically and the color will go, you know, whiter, if you will. Lighter, but slash whiter. Um, and that's the, poly the polymer chalking and oxidizing and falling apart. Well, what about the fading? What happens there is that uh, as that polymer starts to fall apart, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't protect the pigmentation, uh, the colorant part of the formulation. It stops protecting it. And uh, then that starts to either 
come out, wash out, fade out, um, and weather itself. So the so really the colorant, uh, your pigmentation in there, which is giving you the red or blue or green color or brown, um, those particles are encased or encapsulated in the resin system. So it's like a plastic film basically on your roof. And uh, if that plastic, if the plastic part of that film starts to deteriorate, then the pigment is no longer protected and uh, it starts to uh, oxidize itself and also wash off. So just to clarify, a Kynar paint system will protect you much better against chalking and fading than an S&P would. So, so that would mean, so, so would this be accurate? If I had a white or a, uh, a light tan color, it would be more. It would make more sense possibly to go to an S and P. But if I had a bright red or a possibly even a black, or or some of these colors where they're bright and vibrant, um, does that make more sense to use a Kynar versus an S and P? I, I for sure. Uh, the more uh, rich uh, the color, the more dark the color, the more exotic the color. Uh, the safer you are with a Kynar, uh, Kynar product. Uh, typically, again, I, you know, I mentioned that, that chalking and fading, um, the trend you see is lower gloss, quote unquote, whitening of the product, right? So it, this looks drab and it looks like it's powdering out, right? Uh, in a white, a tan, an earth tone, um, you don't see it as much, right? In it, or it's not as object, it's not objectionable or as objectionable. Even with some of the browns, uh, not so bad. I mean, it doesn't look like the original brown, but it's kind of a nice, you know, earthy brown. Uh, reds, not so good. And I think we've all seen blues out there that have turned from nice, a nice dark, rich blue into a powder baby blue that looks like that, right? Let me ask you this. So black, you know, we're talking about bright and vibrant colors. Well, you know, a, a bright red, a, a, a blue. But I've seen black roofs that, that they just look horrible after many years. So a black is also an example of a color that not, might not be bright, but a color that really should be done in Kynar. Is that, is that accurate? It is, uh, but it's, it's accurate, but not, not necessarily 100% accurate. And let me tell you why. Um, so it's a matter of degree. But again, that, that, mode, that, that mode of failure is, again, to go lighter and chalkier and all that stuff, right? So with a black, that's obviously more dramatic and really noticeable, right? It just really doesn't look black anymore if it starts powdering out, powdering white. Um, but now with the black, the other issue with uh, with the, the fade part of it, the chalking, the chalking, it, chalk and fade, right? They're always kind of coupled together. And you can read those with the color, the way the color looks differently. But the fading part, um, the resin is a big part of it, like you mentioned, the SMP versus Kynar, but also the pigmentation that is used. So the actual pigment that is used um, plays a role in everything, right? right. So, uh, so if you use, you know, a uh, uh, pigment that's very UV resistant and chemical resistant and really uh, high end pigment, it's going to last longer than, uh, you know, a low cost. El Cheapo product, right? That type of thing. So, um, so what you run into, so you might see a black roof that looks like heck, and, uh, you know, and it's a polyester black, low cost black type of thing. And you think, yeah, well, that's what happens when you use, uh, you know, polyester, but you don't know that it could be, you know, it could be a polyester that's not so good or an SMP product that's not so good, but it also could be an SMP product that's got a inferior black in there. Right. So it could be a pigmentation issue too, and uh, that's the that's the reason the new, the latest um, generation, if you will, of SMP products is significantly better than the uh, the generation, the previous generation. Well, when you talk the latest generation, you're talking products that have come out in the last ten years, the last five years. Yeah, probably ten years, five to seven years. You know, sure. ten years, I guess it goes by pretty quick. But so what they've done with that latest generation, uh, Paul, is that they're using um, the same pigmentation that they're using in the Kynar product. Oh, so they're okay. taking pigmentation out of the equation. So in the old days, 
you know, you'd use the most cost effective exterior pigmentation. So you're still using exterior pigmentation. That's good stuff, but they save the high end, really, really good stuff for Kynar because that product has always carried a premium. Gotcha. So would this be accurate? Now you're also seeing these days, the price gap between Kynar and the SMP is a lot tighter. Yes. Um, and that's because they're using the good pigmentation. So that part is, is helped the performance of the SMPs, but you still have the uh, resin issue. To do. Would this be accurate also? Because I, I know when we sell SMP, it's used on a siding application more often than a roofing application. So would this be accurate that you're going to get less UV exposure on a siding versus a roof, and maybe that's a reason to go with an SMP on a siding only versus if it's a roof. Does that make sense, or does that not make sense to you? No, that makes a lot of sense. There's no question about that. And it's hard to, uh, you know, it, it's hard to imagine how dramatic that can be, but the radiation on a roof, the environment on the roof is just a lot tougher than sidewall, uh, surprisingly so. So um, in the paint business, you know, we're always putting stuff out on test fences and things like that. And there's, you know, all these uh, testing sites. So we'll make panels, right? And we send them to South Florida and there's a big uh, panel farm, you know, acres and acres and acres. And they have these uh, racks and you put your panels there and, they read them for you. And every couple of years, they send you readings and you go out and visit them. And you, you've probably all seen pictures. Um, uh, guys in the business and seen pictures and send panels that have been there. So we can test, we test this stuff and it's pretty dramatic. So if you test something at a 45 degree angle uh, versus flat or versus vertical, pretty huge difference in the performance of the problem. The other, the other issue is, uh, you know, what's behind the panel, how hot the panel gets, all that stuff. Sure. And uh, so roofing product tends to be better insulated. Um, so when it gets hot, it stays hotter longer. That accelerates the degradation of the polymer and, the, and everything else. And the radiation is way, way more severe. So let's talk about cost real quick. Now, at least from what I've seen, um, I don't know anybody really that's selling 26 gauge Kynar. Do you, do you, do you sell any 26 gauge Kynar to speak of, or that's as rare as I believe that it is? That's uh, pretty rare. So if I was to go, if I was to look at the cost basis of an SMP versus a Kynar, it, it's a twofold problem. I got to go with a heavier gauge, meaning a 24 gauge minimum. And now I have to go with a higher quality paint. So when you factor both of those, it's probably about a 25% price increase, you know, just as a general guesstimate. Would that be pretty accurate? Probably. Um, it may be slightly more than that. So it depends on the color a lot, too. So, um, and the other thing, uh, the other area where um, we do recommend uh, kind of product, but it doesn't always fly because of the pricing. Um, and that's in the uh, metallic area or the non-metallic metallics. So those are the shiny, you know, metallic looking colors. Um, and that, the durability on those products and, uh, uh, you know, those will get priced out as exotic finishes. So um, they get priced out as exotics from not only the paint manufacturer, but the paint applicator. And so those guys get really pricey. Um, but we like to, we like kind of in those, in those products to protect that metallic looking flake. Sure. What about mats? You know, we're talking about metallics and I, I, I totally, I can totally understand why you want to use a kinder, but what about mats? Um, are they significantly more expensive? Um, are, are they better off in a kinder? I mean, what, what's your take on that? Uh, they're slightly more expensive. They're not significantly more expensive uh, from a raw material standpoint. Um, what about from a performance standpoint? Does it make a lot more sense to do that in a Kynar versus an SMP? No, I think both uh, both um, technologies benefit from that math. So I don't know that it makes a difference one way or the other. Um, Kynars in general start out at lower gloss, right? So 
Um, you can't make, a, you know, a, uh, so the S&P start out at higher loss. So when you make a S&P mat, you've got more matting agent in there than you do with a company. Okay, so just by default, if you really want a, a non-glossy matte finish, you're better off using Kynor just because a, a, as a whole, it's going to be less glossy. To start with, right. Right. But also, uh, you know, uh, when it's already low gloss and the mode of failure is kind of to go lower in gloss, you don't really have very far to go. <laughs> you know, so it kind of, you know, kind of, makes the long-term performance more consistent with the original initial application. So if I was to ask you, what are the pros of a Kynar paint finish? And you just briefly, what would you say the pros of the Kynar paint finish would be? Well, the main, the main pro is really the, the UV radiation stability or the, the long-term uh, color fastness and uh, uh, chalk and fade resistance. What would the main con be? Uh, price. Price and now, if I'm going to ask you the same question about S and P, what would what would the main pro and the main cons be? I think they're a good product for sure, but the main pro versus a Kynar would be the economics. Okay, and what would the main con be? Again, the, the main con would be the the, the main con would be the you know the color uh, the color range and uh, um, the, the mode of failure. Uh, so so it's a trade off of price versus performance, basically. Is there any other notable cons and pros, or that's it in a nutshell? It's it's price. Well, and I think the uh, typically you know typically S and P products are a little harder. Um, Does that really kind. matter? Does that really matter in a practical no, application? It, it, it depends on the application. Uh, I mean, it depends on who you're talking to and what they're doing. I, um, it really doesn't matter that much in general. Uh, but for some sidewall applications or for some uh, applications where there's uh, abrasion involved in the use of the product uh, can make a difference. We hope that you found this video helpful and please support our channel by hitting the like button and subscribing as we release new videos weekly. Thank you very much. You can find step-by-step -step installation videos and homeowner guides on our channel. And don't forget to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribe. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.